Russian President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday launched a massive exercise of the country's nuclear forces featuring practice missile launches as he continued to flex the country's nuclear muscle amid spiraling tensions with the West over Ukraine. Speaking in a video call with military leaders, Putin said that the drills will simulate top officials' action in using nuclear weapons and include practice launches of nuclear-capable ballistic and cruise missiles. Putin, who has repeatedly brandished the nuclear sword as he seeks to deter the West from ramping up support for Ukraine, emphasized on Tuesday that Russia's nuclear arsenal remains a reliable guarantor of the country's sovereignty and security. Taking into account growing geopolitical tensions and emerging new threats and risks, it's important for us to have modern strategic forces that are always ready for combat, he said, reaffirming that Russia sees nuclear weapons use as the ultimate, extreme measure of ensuring its security. Putin noted that Moscow will continue to modernize its nuclear forces, deploying new missiles that have a higher precision, quicker launch times and increased capabilities to overcome missile defenses. Last month, the Russian leader warned the US and NATO allies that allowing Ukraine to use Western-supplied longer-range weapons for strikes deep inside Russia would put NATO at war with his country. He reinforced the message by announcing a new version of the nuclear doctrine that considers a conventional attack on Russia by a non-nuclear nation that is supported by a nuclear power to be a joint attack on his country, a clear warning to the US and other allies of Kiev. Putin also declared the revised document envisages possible nuclear weapons use in case of a massive air attack, holding the door open to a potential nuclear response to any aerial assault, an ambiguity intended to deter the West. Практическими пусками баллистических и крылатых ракет. Сразу отмечу, что Россия подтверждает свою принципиальную позицию о том, что использование ядерного оружия является крайней исключительной мерой обеспечения безопасности государства. Вместе с тем, мы хорошо понимаем, что именно ядерная триада продолжает оставаться надежным гарантом суверенитета и безопасности нашей страны позволяет решать задачи стратегического сдерживания, а также поддерживать ядерный паритет и баланс сил в мире как объективные факторы глобальной стабильности. Учитывая рост геополитической напряженности, появление новых внешних угроз и рисков, важно иметь современные и постоянно готовые к боевому применению стратегические силы. Будем и дальше совершенствовать все их компоненты. Ресурсы для этого имеются. Подчеркну, мы не собираемся втягиваться в новую гонку вооружений, однако будем поддерживать ядерные силы на уровне необходимой достаточности. В текущем году их оснащенность современными образцами вооружения достигла порядка 94%. В соответствии с госпрограммой вооружения будем планомерно переводить РВСН на новые ракетные комплексы стационарного и мобильного базирования, которые по сравнению с предыдущими поколениями обладают более высокой точностью, сокращенным временем подготовки к пуску. И что крайне важно, повышенными возможностями по преодолению систем противоракетной обороны. Кроме того, продолжается ввод в состав военно-морского флота новейших атомных подводных крейсеров, а также модернизация стратегических бомбардировщиков дальней авиации. Все это необходимо для эффективной защиты России и наших граждан. Russian President Vladimir Putin is trying to create the illusion of control over the events in the Kursk region. To do this, he exaggerates the successes of Russian troops in this region and sometimes even openly lies. In particular, in an interview with the Russian propagandists on October the 25th, Putin again stated that 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region were allegedly surrounded by Russians. This was noted by the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. Talking to propagandists of the state Russian TV channel Russia One, the dictator again repeated the thesis voiced on October the 24th at the closing of the BRICS summit about the alleged 
encirclement of 2,000 Ukrainian soldiers in the Kursk region. This time, he embellished the statement with the assertion that the encircled Ukrainian soldiers do not even understand that they are surrounded. Putin also added that the connection between the encircled units and the main Ukrainian forces had allegedly been lost and stated that the Russian Defense Ministry had not publicly reported the successful capture of some Ukrainian positions in the Kursk region by Russian troops. Putin again did not admit that the Ukrainian salient in the Kursk region extends from the Ukrainian-Russian international border and that Ukrainian troops can freely pass through sections of the border controlled by Ukraine. The ISW added, at the same time after Putin's first statement about the encirclement of Ukrainian soldiers and the fact that they allegedly suffered significant losses, the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, made a public refutation of the Russian dictator's words. Sirsky also announced the losses that Putin's army had suffered in the Kursk region since the beginning of the Ukrainian operation. During this time, Russia has lost 17,819 of its servicemen, 711 of whom were captured by the defense forces. Putin's exaggerated statistics on Ukrainian casualties are likely part of his attempts to explain Russia's failure to decisively repel the Ukrainian invasion of the Kursk region after almost three months in the context of the likely imminent deployment of North Korean troops to fight in the area. The ISW concluded,